Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we strive for the best drilling machines possible. Today, I'm going to show you how to program this magnificent two-drill automated rover system. This definitely speeds up your process, and these two drill bits can chew through pretty much anything. For this video, I'm primarily going to remote operate everything on this drone. For starters, let's move it into our construction area so we can take a better look. After we program this, I'll show you how it operates. So, remote access. I haven't named this yet, but it is just my small grid 5785. First, I set up my advanced rotors. And we'll go through the other components along the way. Advanced rotor L. Velocity is negative 2 RPM. Lower limit is 0. Upper limit is 90. Now it's important to pay attention to this because advanced rotor R is different. Advanced rotor R is 2 RPM. But the lower limit is now negative 90 and the upper limit is zero. This is because they are listed on opposite sides of the rover. Then we'll skip to hinge left. And for the hinges, they're primarily set up the exact same way because they follow the same suit. The velocity is negative 1.5, lower limit negative 90, upper limit 90. Same on the right side. Velocity is negative 1.5, lower limit negative 90, upper limit 90. If we move down to the pistons, piston drill L is going to be a negative 0.1 ms. This is quite slow, but we need it that way so it doesn't mess up when we're drilling. The piston drill R, again, is negative 0.1 ms. Piston L arm is negative 0.5 ms. For the most part, all these pistons are maximum distance of 2 meters and minimum distance of 0. Piston L base is negative 0.2 ms. This is twice the speed of the piston drill L. And the same on the piston R arm, it's negative 0.5 ms, maximum distance 2. Minimum distance zero. Piston R base again is negative 0.2, maximum distance two, minimum distance zero. And that's pretty much for all the components besides the event controllers and timer blocks. Event controller L1, make sure that thing is on. We're basing the event off of the angle change. The condition will be equal or greater than, and our threshold will be 85 degrees. So this 85 degrees is based off of the Vance Rotor L. For selected actions, we have Trigger Timer Block L1. As you see, there's nothing in the secondary slot but you have up to nine slots now for every event controller. Then for event controller L2, we want cargo filled percentage. Equal to or greater than 95%. I don't put this at 100% because we don't want to overfill the drills. Then connector, medium cargo container, O2H2 generator, and always remember your AND gate. Otherwise, as soon as one is full, it will stop the entire process. We want to make sure all three are full. Select actions. And this is going to be timer block L2 start. We need a slight delay on this. Then we also have piston L base extend. After that, there's nothing left. For event controller L3... We have the angle changed, equal to or greater than, and 88 degrees. 
or angle threshold. This is basically part of reversing the process. It's going to be based off of hinge L. The selected action that we want it to perform is going to be piston drill L extend. And in the second slot, piston L base retract. And nothing in the third. Event controller R1 is going to be similar to event controller L1. Make sure it's on, of course. Angle changed equal to or less than. The angle is now negative 85 degrees, which is opposite of L1. And this is based off of advanced rotor R. Its selected actions are going to be similar where we want to trigger the timer block R1 and nothing in the second slot. In event controller R2, we are going to have the similar cargo filled percentage equal to or greater than and this is going to be the threshold of 95% again. Based on filling the connector, the medium cargo container, and O2H2 generator. And of course, make sure you select that AND gate. Our selected actions, as soon as these are full, is to trigger or start timer block R2. And then piston R base extend. Piston R base, the point of that is to be able to lift them back out of whatever you just drilled before retracting the drills. Event controller R3, it's going to be based off of angle change again, equal to or greater than angle threshold 88 degrees, because the hinges are the same for the angles. This will be hinge R, or the right hinge. For our selected actions, we're going to extend piston drill R, and we're going to retract piston R base. And that is it for that one. Now on to the timer blocks. Timer block L1. We have a delay of three seconds. And it's going to extend piston L base, reverse hinge L, extend piston L arm, and turn on your drill. Timer block L2. Delay of three seconds. Setup actions. Retract piston L base. Retract piston L arm. Reverse hinge L, turn off the event controller L1, turn off the drill, retract piston drill L, and advance rotor L reverse. We turn off event controller 1 because when we reverse the advanced rotor, we don't want it to trigger the sequence again. Timer block 3 is actually not used. This is for future planning in case you want to add another device. Timer block R1 is going to be similar. It's going to be three seconds. Set up actions. Piston R base extend. Hinge R reverse. Piston R arm extend. And toggle block on. I am going to be posting this in the Steam Workshop as a picture along with the model. Timer block R2. Three second delay. Set up actions. Piston R base retract. Piston R arm retract. Hinge R reverse. Event controller R1 off. Drill off. Piston drill R retract. And advanced rotor R reverse. 
And of course, timer block R3 is blank. Well, that's all the controls. Let's check our inventory. Currently is completely empty except for the O2H2 generator. So when we start drilling, we'll know that it will do a full cycle. So for this rover, if you go to your G screen, I set up the camera for number one and both advanced rotors on number two. So if we trigger number two, it should start drilling but let's move this a little bit farther from the entrance of the construction area. With the assistance of the camera, we'll just pull it over to the side here so we don't leave a big hole in the entrance. That should be good enough. So as I trigger this, you'll see the advanced rotors lifting the entire mechanism. Then the base piston should extend and the arm pistons extend. The drills are on and once the hinges reach that 88 degrees, then the drill pistons will activate and extend the drills into the ice along with retracting the base pistons to get the full length possible with these drills. Now you might have a little bit of hiccup here and there because the rover is not that heavy to continuously push down these drills, but over time it will chew until it's on a level surface. There we go. Now that we have a little bit of traction again, you can continuously move a little bit forward as you're drilling in order to fill up our containers. If this was an ore stock though, you may just want to add a few more extra pistons so the drills go down farther instead of simply driving forward or backwards. It doesn't take too long for this to fill up and eventually you'll be able to see the rest of this device in action. For the sequence, the piston drills will reverse and the base pistons will extend so that way your drills will clear the hole. As you can see, the sequence has already started. Then the advanced rotors kick in. And come back to center. The drills are directly in the middle of the rover this time, so the weight doesn't throw you backwards. And there you have it. Pretty simple, and we got rid of the flipping. Okay, let's just maneuver on back around here. And we'll bring this back to the main base to refill our O2 H2 generator over there. Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. And please leave your tips and tricks in the comments section. If you haven't done so already, I appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. Thanks a lot.